Okay, here's the transmission control Peter for the automatic transmission that I'm having trouble with. Um, I put this resistor in. It's a half watt resistor. And the one right next to it, down here, the small one next to it, that's a quarter watt resistor. And uh, these ones here are some other quarter watt resistors. And if you notice on the top of the capacitors, they've marked these with blue markings. That's still the same uh, CPU, and this one's also made by Okidot, or Okies they're calling it, I'm assuming it's Okidot. And uh, on the other transmission control unit that I got, um, they've replaced those resistors with half watt resistors, like I did. And this one was actually burned up when I got it, uh, or when I was having trouble, this resistor here was burned out, and that's why I replaced it. And I said, well, they should have been using a half watt. Sure enough, on the other transmission, they've replaced these two and these two with half watts. And uh, I'm going to check the voltage value because these are all 35s and uh, 35 to 50s. Except they have a 10, this one here I believe is a 10 volt, which is way too close to um, being probably with the voltage that runs through this. I'm not sure what the voltage on a car, maybe 12 volts. That's kind of high, and most electronics would like to see. 5 volts for this kind of circuit um, but it wouldn't shock me if this was a 12 volt circuit. Printers tend to use tw 12 volts and 24 for drivers. Um, anyways, as engineering, kind of a rule of thumb, you usually double your voltage on your capacitors and it doesn't, it's not that much more expensive, maybe 5 cents, I don't know, 10 cents more expensive to put a bigger uh, voltage capacitor in there. What that enables you to do is say, let's say this is a 5 volt circuit um, you'd want to put a, at least a 10 volt or bigger in there. If this is a 12 volt, you'd put it like a, a 25 or bigger in there. Um, and again, the rest of them are 35s and 50s. And uh, there's one 10, and that's. Plus, these are electrolytic capacitors in the electronic industry. They've been having a lot of trouble with these. Um, they'll actually break. Uh, the chemicals in it break down, and then there's little X's. I don't know if you can see it on top of there. There's a little X. And that's actually so when this fails and explodes internally, um, it has a relief valve kind of built into it. That's why that cuts in the top and it'll bulge out. And that's usually how you can see it, but that doesn't mean the capacitor's not good if it doesn't have a bulge. Um, because, like on this one, it almost looks like I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a bulge coming out the side on one of the capacitors. And uh, so that can happen. They can also leak out the bottom. And they might not leak at all. It could just degrade internally and didn't catastrophically fail. But it's no longer um, giving the correct capacitance, which usually causes timing issues. Um, usually the resistors are in correlation with the capacitors. And uh, there's a formula for figuring stuff out as to how they're supposed to behave. And uh, either the resistor value goes out of whack or the capacitance goes out of whack. It throws off issues. Um, anyways, that's it.